A task is an assigned piece of work that must be completed within a certain time, like cleaning out the fridge before everything inside it turns green. But hey, maybe you're going green. In any case, to keep track of all the tasks and manage them, it's down below in the navigation pane. It's the task folder. It's that clipboard with the check mark there, meaning that when you have something to do, as far as the task goes, hopefully you're marking them complete. You can also mark your progress off as you're moving along. In any case, go ahead and hover over it. You get the pop-up, the hover peak, which up here it says that there's nothing due later. If you click on it and flip it up, anything due today, don't see anything down below either, so hey, we're good. Let's go ahead and click on the folder, click on it again. Now there's more than one way to create a task here. You can either come up here on the Home tab, click on New Task, and you get the subject, the start, and due date fields. Let's go ahead and close out. If you're in another folder and you don't want to leave that folder to create a new task, then in that folder, like the Contact folder, the Calendar, come up here on the Home tab to the New Group, click on New Items, the drop-down arrow, and there you go. You can create a task there. Click off. You can also right click in a blank area, there's new task, or double click in the blank area, there's a new task, or finally, the shortcut keys that are universal but proprietary to the folder, as in if I want to create a new task in this folder, do control N as in Nancy and it creates a new task. If I did it in the contacts folder, it would create a new contact. So let's come up here and type in a subject or, a ta or the name of the task that we want to do, or or the name of the task we want to complete. Create ghost hunting PowerPoint presentation. Ooh, that sounds spooky fun. And then down below we have a due date. You don't have to have any due you don't have to have any dates. You just go ahead and save and close and that's that. But if you do want a date, you don't have to have a start date, you can say, let's go ahead and say it's due this Saturday the 17th. You can see up here the information area, due in four days, so you get the countdown, we got four. Then if you're like, yeah, I'd like to add a start date, maybe you don't know when you're supposed to start, but when you do, or you decide that you, ought to, that you better start sooner than later, you can do it the same day, today, or let's do it tomorrow. And then down below, a reminder, go ahead and check the box, and by default, it's going to be the last day that it's due. Well, that's not too helpful. Well, it is because it's earlier in the morning. But by, but by midnight, on Saturday the 17th, if I haven't completed it by then, I'm in trouble. And so maybe I want an earlier reminder than the same day. I'll have to go ahead and change it. Click on the date picker. And let's do the 15th. So it starts on the 14th, or when I should be starting. But if for some reason I don't, I get the pop-up in Outlook. Well, that is, you have to have Outlook. Well, that is, again, you have to have Outlook open to get that pop-up. And by then, if I haven't done anything, oh, well, at least I've got Thursday at 8 a.m. to remind me that is if I got the if I got the computer on and I get it at 8 a.m. Because if I come in that night and then I open up Outlook, well, because it's past 8 a.m., it'll still pop up. But because I came late, it'll pop up at that time, obviously. So keep that in mind. And then about the time, you can click on the drop-down arrow and change any of the times. They're in half-hour increments. Or if you want to get more persnickety, let's go ahead and say it'll be 8.01. And then you can go ahead and hit enter to solidify that. Then you have the status. Well, I haven't started it yet. You can click on the drop-down arrow and say it's in progress. little flag there to let you know, well, I'm thinking about it. Whatever in progress means to you. And then completed. Well, when I click completed, it's going to mark the progress field at 100%. So completed, 100%, information disappears as well as the reminder because, hey, you don't need a reminder if you completed it, right? In any case, let's go ahead and click on the drop down arrow. We'll talk about this later on about how to, about the different stages and using the mark complete field. In fact, if I just go down even just a little bit that it's not completed, it says it's in progress. But I digress about this part because we'll cover it later. And then waiting on somebody else, it's still at 75% complete or deferred. In any case, let's go ahead and go back to not started. It clears out the percent complete. And then below that, you have the priority, normal. Click on it. You can go low or high, which you get those same options up here in the tags group. High, if I select high here, 
It says hi to me there. Well, that's fun or low. Updates it there. We'll go to, well, let's do hi. And then click, and then go ahead and hit the enter key. And then it updates it here. So it's highlighted. Well, let me, well, let me move out of the way as high importance. You can also mark it as private, as we discussed in earlier training videos, where if you're sharing your, in this case, tasks with other users across the network through the exchange, they won't be able to take a look at the title and find out what tasks you have to complete. It'll just be a block date and a range. They won't even get access to your notes to find out if you do have any notes down below in the field here, which I will, which I do, or I will. Let's go ahead and type in some notes. But let me come up here, click on the Format tab. I want to do a a list here, so let's click on the number, the numbered one two, the numbering one two three, and let's do so in order for me to have this ghost pre this ghost hunting PowerPoint presentation completed, I got to have something that's going to pop it, that's going to bring it to life, you know, images, video, audio, and so Carrie's going to get me that stuff as soon, as soon as she can get it to me, I can go ahead and pop it into the program and be able to create something that will be fun for the kids on Halloween. And you can see here that I'm waiting upon Carrie for images, audio, and video for my PowerPoint presentation to come to life. Because without that, I mean, what do I have? Just a bunch of text? No, we got to have some action in there. So that'll be fun to go ahead and get that ready. But then again, I'm waiting. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.